Picture this, you're making a patch, everything is going great, but you realize you need an extra voice with some complex timbers, but your main complex oscillator is already doing another task. Luckily, you have one phalistry that you are not using for modulation purposes, and um, good news, your patch might be safe, because today I want to talk about six ways to get interesting timbers out of phalistry. Let's see. <laughs> The first one is a sort of flip sync timber, and to do that we need to set our generators to loop with a short time scale. We can use either one as our main oscillator, uh, as our main uh, generator, and the one that synchronizes the other. Uh, I will use the green one, and the yellow one is going to be our synced uh, oscillator. Right now, they are both outputting. Two triangle waves. And uh, what we're going to do is to take the end of fall segment and use it to recall the yellow raising stage. If we now patch a volt per octave signal to both generators, like this, one and two. You may realize that this sync sound is a bit harsh compared to Brenso. That's correct because um, our cycles, our main oscillator cycle, just recalls the raising stage on Falistri. So if the ramp is going up, it will just keep going up, it won't invert its state regardless of where the waveform is. As opposed to Brenso, where it's flip sync here, inverts the green oscillator direction at every cycle. Uh, I will put a video in the description uh, where I went more into these differences. So if we want to be sure to uh, reset our cycle at every end of fall impulse, we can just set the uh, raising. Uh, so if we want to be sure to reset our uh, synchronized oscillator at every cycle of the green one, we must set the attack time all the way to the left. And so there won't be uh, chances, there will be almost no chances where this impulse will come during this segment here. And we will just use the full knob to change and to have the flip sync sound. Tip number two. The force loop input, now we need to set our um, secondary oscillator to either transient or uh, hold. Uh, the time scale is still gonna be short. We will still use the green oscillator as our main audio source. Uh, but we will use its end of rise and patch it to the force loop input. In this way, at every cycle, it will briefly force the yellow generator to loop and then come silent again. I'm gonna use the end of, si end of rise instead of the end of fall because it has a duration, while the end of fall is just an impulse. Then we can take the bipolar output and patch it here. It is quite similar to the so, uh, synchronized option, but I, I think it's a bit smoother in texture. And we are gonna still control both oscillators with the Volper Active signal, like this.
We can take advantage of the slide function on the Usta sequencer to create some sweeps. And we can try to use an envelope to control its articulation. Very nice! For the third tip we will use the max output which is something in between a mixer and an analog OR because it outputs only the highest signal between those two. And, um, but it is a unipolar only signal, so we will need an external help uh, from the 3 to 1. But you can use literally any offset generator that you have in your system. So we will set both generators to loop again, like this, and we will take the max output. We will start by setting these knobs to noon. We will take the max output, patch it here, and uh, patch it out to our uh, CGM mixer. We can bring in the level. As you can see, it is unipolar only. The CGM is not too much bothered by this because it is, uh, it is AC coupled, so it filters the DC component, but still, I think it's recommended to use it to use an offset and balance the signal to a bipolar one if your mixer is uh, not uh, specifically designed, is DC coupled, so that your speakers will be safe. And right now we can just bring in the green generator really. Like this, and we are creating a very almost amplitude modulated kind of sound. Which is not quite pleasant per se, but as soon as we start modulating it to sounds with the volt proactive signal, obtain this slightly unorthodox waveforms. higher range where this doesn't bother as much as an actual interval. I think it can be a nice touch to your patch. The next uh, tip of course uses uh, the uh, four quadrant multiplier which we already used to tame our sync patch. And uh, this is basically a voltage controlled linear attenuverter, so the two signals are multiplying each other. By default, we have the yellow unipolar output semi normal to the first input, and the green bipolar output semi normal to the second one. So we are actually using, with this configuration here, with nothing patched, we are using the green generator as a carrier and the yellow generator as a modulator. Now, if I send volt productive signal to them, I am obtaining an amplitude modulated signal. And if I am careful enough to match the two oscillators, to set them to a very, to a consonant interval, like this, can obtain a nice AM and reach the timber. We can take this patch a bit further by overriding the semi-normalization and using the yellow bipolar output as our uh, second input. 
you can see that we, while we are doing so, we are removing the fundamental tone from the green generator and giving more importance to the two sidebands generated by the ring modulation. So this one is amplitude modulation or unbalanced because one of the signals is bipolar. And this one is ring modulation or balanced modulation because both are bipolar and we are using the four quadrants at the same time. For the next tip, we need to come back to the synchronized patch. And uh, we can try and make it softer by combining it with the four quadrant multiplier we just used. So instead of listening to the bipolar output, we are going to patch it to the four quadrant multiplier and use the unipolar version of our green generator to modulate it. And it will make the sound much, much smoother. But we can take this patch even further by using this section here, the dual cascaded frequency divider that, as you may already know, gives us a copy of our green generator sound, but an octave lower, like this, or even two octaves lower. It is a square wave, but it's still something pretty useful. And instead of using the green unipolar output to modulate our synchronized sound, we are going to use its division by one octave set to unipolar. We can combine it with the green sound. And it's going to give us a more growling sound. And for the final patch, we need to go back to our amplitude modulation slash ring modulation setting. So I will control my two generators with the same volt per octave and patch my... four quadrant multiplier output to the CGM. What I want to create now is a feedback where I am taking the four quadrant multiplier output and feed it back in together with the yellow generator. So I will take advantage of my buffered multiple here, the 333, to duplicate my four quadrant multiplier output and one output goes straight to the mixer and the other one goes into our 31. I'm gonna remove the offsets for now and check that the phase switch is set to the left. And uh, I will take the yellow bipolar output and mix it here, like this. I will momentarily lower this value here and just take this output and pass it here. Right now, I am basically using this one, the bipolar output, as my second input, or one of the two inputs, so I'm re-performing the classical ring modulation. You can hear that I am removing the green fundamental tone, balanced modulation, just sidebands, nothing too fancy for now. But now I can bring in the output back and I can create a, a nastier sound. At this point I can play with uh, the uh, offset knob 
and add some offset to either of these sounds, it really doesn't matter which one. So that I can bring back the fundamental tone of our green generator. You can see also that the modulation is shifting from the two quadrants. And by playing with the ratio between the oscillators, I can obtain different kind of timbres, more consonant or more dissonant. Let's use our envelope here to add some more articulation. By increasing the amount of signal that I am sending back into the four quadrant multiplier, I am also increasing the number of sidebands. I can uh, invert the phase of the feedback signal to obtain more unpredictable results, like this. And these were a few ideas on how to achieve interesting timbers with Falistri. But there uh, can be more to be said, so if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below as usual. For now, I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.